This is Raun from 1349, and you're listening to Collision on Voice FM. How are you? I'm good, and you? I'm good. I just got my morning coffee, so I'm ready to go. Awesome. And how is 1349? 1349, as we like to pronounce it, is uh, going good. We uh, This weekend we just did a special anniversary show for our uh, third album, Hellfire, mm-hmm. uh, here in Oslo, which is our base in hometown. And so good attendance, and uh, it was nice to pay tribute to, uh, to the album that was the, the main breakthrough. And been, uh, people have been referring to the Hellfire as more like a benchmark in uh, extreme black metal. So mm. it's nice to, to celebrate that. Um, and this weekend, uh, we are going to um, Lillehammer, the Olympic town of Norway, mm. where we are headlining the um, Lillehammer Metal Festival. So back to doing uh, normal shows again, basically. Awesome. I have this really bad habit of getting names wrong, and even when it's just numbers, I still manage to get it wrong. But 1349 <laughs> is actually the year that the Black Death came to, is it Europe or to Norway? To you, uh, to Norway, yeah. yeah. Right. So I guess if the Black Death inspired you, you are definitely going to be an extreme band, aren't you? <laughs> you well, know, yeah, it's the Black Plague hit Norway, the hardest of all country in Europe. Because it came back in waves, so that the first wave came in uh, 1349. And it ended our royal bloodline, and it uh, put us on the government of uh, first Denmark and Sweden uh, for like 400 years. So it was kind of... An, uh, the real dark ages for Norway in general, and everybody learn it in school. So the number 1349 is something that everybody has in the back of their mind because they they learned it in school, and it's a big part of the history. So every time you say the band name to a Norwegian person, they're like, I think I heard about you. <laughs> but maybe they, they haven't heard about the band, and it's, uh, maybe it's just a historical reference. But of course, it's the, the grimmest part of... Um, Norwegian uh, history, and it was a suitable name for a, a black metal band because it brings back a feeling of grimness and darkness that is a suitable description for uh, the, the same feeling that we like to imply in uh, the music that we make. Yeah, and what about then with your music and that? Has 1349 and the Black Death been a big influence in your music? We don't think of uh, it, it's not a conceptual thing. It's more like a, it sets the mood for basically it puts a name on 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 the music like a label that uh, more on, on a subconscious level that what we think of when we think of the plague uh, is uh, darkness and grimness and that is kind of the reference that we put into our music when when it comes to label our music we like to label it oral hellfire <laughs> and uh, and that's kind of the more like the benchmark that we try to live up to, that we are to perform music that can be referred to as oral hellfire. Yeah. That is how the musical aspect is approached. And can I ask you personally, like you are the vocalist in the band, so I assume you do most of the lyric writing and that. What does inspire you? Well, uh, it's been some years since I did most of the lyric writing. I have... Um, I kind of retired uh, some years ago from from writing. I uh, lost the the major in, uh, inspiration, and at the same time, uh, a good friend of mine he had written a, one lyric already, and he liked it so much uh, that he had several other lyrics that he could use for his band, and these lyrics fitted perfectly with 1349's material. So I kind of the lyrics that I would normally write he wrote so much better. Right. So um, it was a natural choice to step back. I want the best uh, the best music and the best lyrics to go together. So uh, this one was better, so I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let him write, basically. I can give him some input from time to time. And uh, he's been writing since uh, the first song. He did one song on, um, on Beyond the Apocalypse, then he did several on uh, Hellfire. And Revelations of the Black Flame, Demon R, and The Master Cauldron of Chaos. Uh, he'd been writing for all of those. I did uh, only one lyric on Revelation, and uh, I came with some inputs for lyrics for the other albums. Just basically, we work very well together. So we talk about lyrical directions and stuff, and he, he writes it down. We are, on the other hand, trying to switch things a bit around for the next album to see if we can uh, work more closely together and kind of co-write in a way. So um, let's see what happens. You need to you need to mix things up 
uh, from time to time to evolve in our music and, and our art is very important to us. Do you think that maybe after a couple of albums and that you sort of lost inspiration because you weren't quite as angry inside? No, uh, it was more of a, a change in lifestyle. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll leave it at that. Can I ask what, I mean, as you said, you don't write all the lyrics and that for the band anymore, but you have done quite a bit of producing of the albums. Yeah, I, um, I like to have the overall um, look and kind of tie things together. That's kind of my one of my advantages. Hmm. But, um, I, I'm, I'm better at that. And I also have, um, I'm the one with the most technical skills maybe in the band also. So it's, uh, I know my way around computers and consoles. So <laughs> I can... Hmm can help ha- help out the most in that so we all have different tasks and um, and roles to you un- to uniform the band as, uh, as one unit and uh, that's kind of been my thing to hold more in the onto the production and stuff do you actually do production for other bands as well now if i get asked and i got the time i uh, i would definitely consider doing that i, I like the time uh, spent in the studio work and create in the studio i, I feel very comfortable in the studio environment so uh, that's definitely something that i could do on the other hand it's something that uh, pays very little so um, i rather up till now i spent all that time with 1349 uh, since i need money for uh, for food and uh, alcohol as well. Yeah, it's um, <laughs> definitely if you want to make a lot of money, being a musician is not the way to go. No, and uh, metal is not the genre, and black metal is definitely not the genre to hit the masses. <laughs> 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 no, that's not the reason why we do it. It's more like a, it's more like a calling, basically. Hmm. So, um, I like to see it as, long story short, I founded the band 1349 because I disliked the direction that black metal was heading. Mm-hmm. In the later half of the 90s, it was too much synthesizers brought onto it, and I felt that all the grimness and darkness that was the foundation of the music uh, and kind of the spine-chilling uh, groove that got me into the genre in the first place was lost. And I felt so strongly about the, the genre black metal that instead of just complaining about uh, other bands not doing what I... Uh, felt was needed, I formed 1349 to be the tool to bring on the legacy and play the black metal the way that I feel that it needs to be played in order to maintain the feeling surrounding the myth and the genre of black metal. Yeah, and if you really love something, you've become like leaders in the black metal scene across Europe and probably around the world. Yeah, well, it's... I, I was completely happy about being a, a fan of black metal and just listening to it. But when it changed so radically, I felt the need to to take matters into my own hand and, and steer it in the direction that I felt was proper in order to maintain the the heritage, basically. Yeah, and late September last year, you did release your sixth studio album, Massive Cauldron of Chaos, which is your very first trip out to Australia. Yeah, we've been uh, we were trying to get down there for uh, for many years. I remember first time we we had an offer of us we play we were playing a show um, with Hobbs Angel of Death, mm-hmm. and he urged us to come there uh, to Australia. And he wanted to set something up for us. It never worked out, unfortunately. But um, we had offers from time to time, and we were always looking forward to the first time that we were be able to travel. Although it's a very long travel uh, to see our Australian fans. Yeah, well, as you said, it is a very long trip, and you've got five shows while you're here. Are you going to be just playing music from that album, or will you be playing music from across your catalogue? It will be across our catalogue, yeah. The set list is not put in stone yet, but I uh, got a pretty good idea what we what we're going to do. Right. It will be mainly, of course, from uh, Massive Cauldron or Chaos, but since it's the first tour that we do, we, of course, need to play all of the uh, classics as well, so <laughs> to put it that way. Yeah, if people so, uh, go to facebook.com forward slash 1349 official, they can actually let you know if, if there's something specific they really want to hear, can't they? Fans can always 
contact us in, in any matters that uh, they want to do and express their wishes. We will put together uh, a set list regardless and a uh, best possible, obviously. Yeah, I was going to ask, actually, considering it is your first time in Australia, there's probably not a lot of people in Australia who have seen your live show. So can you tell me, like, something about your live show, what people can expect? Well, it's a pretty intense and, and brutal affair, basically. I get a lot of people saying that, like non-metal people, that have uh, seen our shows and they say like I don't particularly like to to listen to your music uh, on album or but to see you guys live is just massive it's impressive it's so filled with energy uh, I know that uh, we have a reputation among people that uh, are more into music and not specific genre that and like going to live shows that you need to see 1349 live that is a reputation that I'm, I'm really proud of. Right, awesome. So basically, it is an experience that you have to just have. It's like hellfire on stage. That is what I'm being told. We, we just walk on stage and perform our art the way that we feel is necessary and write in order to justify the music in the best possible way. And we do it by heart and we do it and we mean everything that we do. It, it's not an act. It's more of a, a primal uh, ritual in a way. It's, it comes natural. And when I walk on stage, uh, I, I don't remember any lyrics or anything. They, they come out when I hear the music, basically. I don't think when I perform. It's more of a, uh, a natural cycle, basically, that shines through the whole experience. But it is it comes very natural and it looks more right to people when they watch it, basically. Right. It's easier probably for people to feel that experience if, if that's what you're doing and that's the energy you're giving out. That's uh, what I think is, uh, is the case, yeah. Awesome. And you are, you're you actually going to be starting your tour in Perth on the 23rd of February 2016 and then you'll be in Brisbane on the 25th, in Sydney on the 26th, on the 27th, you'll be at Max Watts in Melbourne, and then you've got a show in Wellington in New Zealand before you... Are you heading home, or are you got you going to Asia or somewhere before you go back home? I think we're going home, yeah. That's what I know. As of now, we are going home. Awesome. I will also tell people it's 1349 Chaos Raids Australian and New Zealand Tour 2016 to look out for. And your website is www.legion1349.com. That's correct. That's the main hub for all the vital information is being put. Yeah. And the album Massive Cauldron of Chaos is out now. And thank you very much. It has been really good talking to you. I'm going to get in trouble because I've gone over time again. <laughs> <laughs> no problem. But uh, look forward to seeing you out here in February. I hope your first trip to Australia is really, I don't know whether to say really good for you or really dark and hellfire. <laughs> <laughs> good, is a, uh, good is a word that uh, can be used in such a description. That, uh, no problem. Awesome. Good, good is referring to, to every person. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for your tip. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Have a good night. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye.